Copyright Disclaimer Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Non-profit educational personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm going to talk to Dr. Simon Boxall because I know he's in huge demand at the moment. He's an oceanography lecturer. Uh, Dr. Boxall, thank you so much for talking to us about this. I mean, what, what, what can you tell us about the environment um, that the submariner is in now and, and, you know, what the likelihood is of, of, of the, these crew members being uh, hauled to safety in the whole some thing way? Is in, yeah. I mean, the whole thing is in very deep water. Um, you're looking at nearly four kilometres, and that's enormous pressure. But also, we can't use standard sort of radio communication. We can't use any of the normal sort of methods we might use on land to detect this sub. The first thing we could do is actually find it, find out where it is. Now, it's not like the sort of the huge search they had for the missing aircraft, the MH370, all those years ago in the Indian Ocean. They know roughly where it is, much more sort of easy to pinpoint. The big issue here is the time scale. You know, they are going to run out of oxygen by Thursday. Uh, there's no equipment uh, locally, although I've heard that there has been a recent arrival of one of the um, cable laying ships, which does have um, ROV, remotely operated vehicle cameras on board, which could go down to those depths. Um, but once they've located it, they've still got to try and recover it. Shalom, beloved brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike. Welcome. This is your humble servant, Big Levi. And today is Madim June the 20th, 2023, and it's currently 3.03 p.m. Eastern Time, pre-recorded. Now, before we jump into this, uh, I would like to say thank you to all the newcomers, to all the new subscribers that sent their questions or asked the questions. However, we want to let you know that YouTube, of course, they are watching our videos and they are removing your comments and they are blocking people. The other day, somebody asked a very important question concerning the Shabbatites, who they are and, you know, the characteristics, their function, their responsibility. And by the time I tried to answer the question, in which the, the person asked it like 13 to 20 seconds and the, the question disappeared and I can't find the person. And once again, I apology for this, but the truth needs to be told. Beloved, what seems to be the issue here? What's going on there? What is it that every single time you turn on the news... It is the so-called the billionaires, millionaires, 83 catching hell. Of course, we do know this is not Jacob's trouble. There will be no Jacob's trouble. This is 83's trouble and the others' tribulation. Of course, the two-thirds are going to mix and, and well, the two-thirds going to be in the mist, mixed together with them. However, we know for a fact this is not Jacob's trouble. Now, we have done many experiments concerning the tables and setting up and praying, fasting. All those things are coming to fruition, except for the so-called Gentiles prophecy. Now, we are going to go to certain videos and articles and books to make certain connection because we are investigating what is exactly going on down there. What's happening? Why this thing went missing? Is it a coincidence? Or is it a message? Now, for those of you that are new here, I received another question about someone saying, I should edit my videos. We don't edit video here. Everything is raw. I don't plan anything. I just pull the videos and we do it raw. Everything that you are hearing here is raw. If I try to edit stuff, it will take too long. And then the rawness is going to get out of it. Everything is subtle here. It just happened. That's how the Holy Spirit, so to speak, works. Now, let's take another video and then we'll jump back and forth. You know how we do things. All right. Then. 
Okay, uh, that's not the one. Uh, boy, you know what? Let's let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. Let's just play. Let's just play this one uh, for a minute and then a minute or two, and we will go ahead and dive through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. And if it is down there, you know, longer that would take months. Um, we've only got a couple of days. I mean, I, I, I heard somebody who has formerly been a voyager on that particular submariner saying that before he got on board there was an enormous amount of paperwork mm. enormous numbers of things you had to sign and read and he said that he heard or saw the word death represented numerous times and apparently it was actually set in stone in this paperwork that there was at least seven different ways in which you could perish down there seven different ways that you can perish down there seven the seven days the seven planets perfection and they indeed of course beloved i uh, forgive me i'm not gonna say they, they perish there's a possibility that they are still alive because today when i'm recording this video it's wednesday Okay, uh, the oxygen will run out on Thursday. Of course, we do know th this thing happened two years ago with the Indonesian army. Uh, there was like 53 of them get into a submarine. And then they say by Thursday, they should run out of oxygen. And then a week later, they found them. There weren't nobody does they found the, the thing. We have the clip there. We're going to play it. But however, I'm not here to tell the people that oh, those people perish. But however, because of the sake of this video, let's say seven different way you will perish and indeed that happened now why is that what would those people went down there to do what were they were looking for do you really believe a so-called billionaire paid two hundred and fifty thousand dollar per seat to go sightseeing <laughs> is that what that is hmm Beloved, do you really believe the so-called billionaire paid $250,000 just to go see things with their eyes so they can amaze? Of course, they could not just uh, sit there in their home and send that robot and do things. Do you really believe they just go over there to go see things just to see the wreckage? Of course, this is not a wreckage. It's a freaking graveyard, but, you know, over... 1500 people perish in this thing so they pay they go over there to go see things now let's see what's down there first well according to what they told us they say the, the titanic is down there now there's a little known fact actually it's not here in our community most of our people that study with us we do know uh, about joseph le mercier la Roche, and then we're going to dive who was on the titanic what happened? Let's read over here from Wikipedia. Joseph Philippe Le Mercier La Roche. Joseph Philippe Le Mercier La Roche, 26 May 1886, 15 April 1912, was a Haitian engineer. He was one of the only three passengers of known African ancestry. Of course, they have to muddy us, you know, with the Hamites. African ancestry, the other two being his children in the hill fated voyage of the RMS Titanic. Now, one thing they don't tell you about Joseph Le Mercier, La Roche. Now, he was the son of a well-to-do family and was raised in a privileged environment. La Roche, father, a mixed-race man of Haitian and French heritage, of course, they have to model us in there, encouraged his son education and provide him with opportunities for a better future. In pursuit of quality education, La Roche left Haiti and traveled to France in 1902. He settled in Paris and enrolled at Lucie Fenelon, a prestigious school where he excelled academically. La Roche showed a particular aptitude for engineering and mathematics, harboring dreams of successful career in those fields. During his time in France, La Roche met Juliette Lafargue, a young French woman. 
who would later become his wife. Juliette came from a middle class family and the couple fell in love despite the racial and cultural differences that were uncommon in the early 20th century. In 1912, La Roche and Juliette got married and welcomed their daughter Simone into the world. A few months later, after the daughter's birth, La Roche secured a job as an engineer with the, the Paris Metro. He worked on the construction at the Metro Line 5, contributing to the development of the city's transportation infrastructures. See, they never told you what he was doing. They never told you this guy, okay, Monsieur La Roche, let me just see if I can. Okay. This fellow, La Roche, and his wife, he was an engineer. He actually worked in the construction of the Metro Line, Metro Line 5, in Paris, you know, the train that running back and forth. They don't tell you that guy, he, he was a mathematician. He excelled. Actually, he graduated at the top of his class. He was the best of the best. That's why they call him. They had to get him working there because our people, we are the best. Okay. They don't tell you this. They just said, tell you he went to school over there and things like that. Now, on April 10th, oh, let me, I'm reading something, some note I have here. It's not on the screen, but I just wanted the people to know about this, okay? In the spring of 1912, the family planned to return to Haiti to join La Wash mother who has fallen ill. They booked passage on the RMS Titanic, which was scheduled to sail from Southampton, England, to New York City. At that time, the Titanic was one of the most luxurious and renowned ocean liners, attracting passengers from all walks of life. On April 10, 1912, La Roche, Juliette, and their two daughters boarded the Titanic as second-class passengers. As one of the few non-white passengers on the ship, La Roche faced discrimination and racial prejudice during the voyage. However, he remained focused on providing a better life for the family. Tragedy struck. On the night of April 14, 1912, when the Titanic collided with an iceberg, so to speak, and began to sink. And as the lifeboat were being loaded, La Roche's priority was to secure the safety of his wife and daughter. Due to the social norms and regulation of the time, La Roche was not permitted to board on lifeboat along with them. Because he was black. That's all. Okay? That's all that was. Alright? Now, the wife and the children survived. He didn't. Presumably, he's dead. Now, Joseph La Roche was the nephew of of Cincinnati Le Comte, which was the Haitian president of 1911, 1911 until 1912. He was the great-grandson of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, a leader of the, he's not a leader of the Haitian revolution, he was, he's like the father, he's like the George Washington, of course, that's a, that's an insult to compare him with this fellow, but he, he was the great-grandson of the, uh, the emperor, okay? Well, they, they refer to the, the, the emperor as a leader of the Haitian Revolution. He was not a leader. He was the emperor. Okay, he was the, the Jean-Jacques or Jacques Premier. He was the first emperor. Give the man his title. All right? Cincinnati Le Comte. So our people, they were always noble people because they were noble family. The thing like where they, they told you he went back to France to study is because a bunch of us were already in France ruling the French. King Louis the Thirteen or King Louis the Sixteen, the one that they cut off his head, and and um, uh, Marie Antoinette, they were all black folks. That's when they took us down there. Okay, they they the French Revolution was a bunch of white people came in and in, in, uh, upon our loin, and they took the black folks that was ruling over there. Okay, and then they took our people down, and then they they came in over there in France. Okay, that's and the the French Revolution has nothing to do with all the white people fighting all the white folks. That's not what that is. It was the Gentiles came upon our loin, they destroyed us. A lot of us fled everywhere. We fled to here. We fled all, all because we're all over the world. Okay, so now you see the nobility, the connection, so to speak, the wealthy stock of our people. Now, beloved, this boat not only
only brethren had carried the great grand of the, the nephew of a president, a very wealthy man, with his wife, uh, okay, Le Mercier La Roche, and uh, Saint Sinatis Le Comte. And then this boat, so to speak, had a lot of wealthy white folks in the midst of them. You mean to tell me a lot of those people, Bridget, is that thing recording? Let me see. Is it? Because sometime. I'm, oops. It, oh boy. Yes, it is recording. A lot of those rich people came in from England. And then they are coming here to live in America. And you mean to tell me those people are not bringing their wealth? You think those 1900s people carry paper money with them? Do you really believe the so-called billionaires back then that were coming from England to over here in the 1910s because our people were flourishing the, the uh, well, the Harlem Renaissance happened in the 1920s, but, you know, the Black Wall Street, our people were, were flourishing. As you can see, the brother was a mathematician, he was an engineer. So now you got all those rich white folks, they loaded up this boat with all sort of riches. They bring all their gold and silver. They didn't have that paper money and garbage thing. They could have easily wired that thing stuff. But they had a bunch of things with them. They had so much things they were bringing from <coughs> England, <coughs> excuse me, over here, they brought all the stuff with them. So, not only the Titanic was loaded with a bunch of rich people, but it was also loaded with a bunch of riches. You mean to tell me brother Joseph Le Mercier La Roche was moving his family or was coming from France to the United States. Of course, he was going to visit his mother and then he came without no money. He came with no gold, no silver, nothing. He just jumped on the boat like everybody else. No. He came with a lot of money, a lot of gold, a lot of silver. This Titanic boat had a lot of silver, gold, and a bunch of riches in it. The so-called white folks that are going down there visiting this thing, they are not visiting because they are tourists. They are looting this thing. They are looting this place. Well, at least they are trying to do They've been looting it, but not anymore. Billionaires are paying $250,000. Taking their family. You think uh, they're going to go out there. Oh, look at this. Look at this wreckage. Look at this dead bones. No. They must at some point have certain things. Do you know that the so-called rich folks, they go to certain auction that you and I are not allowed they, they go to certain private sales. They bought private information. They bought private maps. They bought private things that have certain location that they can go retrieve things. Thus, those people went down there. Let's say they want to go see things. But what? What, what is it exactly that you folks want to go down there to see? Well, now we know. There are a couple of Conspiracy theories, or I will not say conspiracy theories, but to an extent, there are a couple of speculation we need to go ahead and uh, we need to go ahead and, and, and clear out and then we can move to our own legend. Okay, they have consp conspiracy theories, we have legends. Okay, now the title of this article said, Wreck of Titanic was hit by submarine, but US keep it quiet. So, what they said here. That the wreck of the Titanic was struck by a submarine hired by a British adventurous company, but the U.S. government kept the incident a secret, according to report. The Titanic's remains were hit by the $35 million Triton when intense and highly unpredictable currents caused the operator to lose control. The expedition later admitted Tuesday, according to the Telegraph, organized by Y.E. EYOS expeditions based on the Isle of Men. The July trip was accompanied by scientists from Newcastle University and carried the sub submersible to the ship's resting place about 12,500 feet. 
below the North Atlantic surface. On its return, the expedition revealed that Titanic Captain Edward John Smith bathtub had disappeared inside the deterioration remains. That means like they are looting this place. Okay, those people are looting that place. The boat was loaded with gold and silver and all kind of sort of precious stones and information. They loot that place. That's what they are doing. You had a bunch of white people, a bunch of wealthy uh, uh, folks getting on the boat like that. It, it doesn't have a safe. Excuse me. It, it doesn't have um, a place where they put gold and, sim and silver. But anyway, so what they are trying to say here, they say the boat was hit by a uh, Torpedo. Okay? The boat was, they actually shoot the boat down. They actually take the boat down because they wanted to get the insurance money. Because uh, the IMS was big crop, big crop, and then they need the money and stuff like that. So they pay a submarine to shoot a torpedo and take this thing down. Actually, that's what they said. Okay, this is the the, the photos of the remain of the of the Titanic. All right, all right. Those are those are pictures. Now, according to eyewitnesses, they said the boat got hit by some. By, there was a loud boom. Now. You have this boat, Bridget, loaded with the, one of the richest people in this boat, okay? You see, this is their faces right here, okay? We only had one of our people was on board, and his wife and his children. Now, those people that survived these things, okay? Actually, uh, this woman did not survive. Those are the faces of the victim. The people that survived this, they reported that the boat, they heard a loud boom! And the boat, or the ship, so to speak, got shaken. And it, it, all there is is a loud boom. Okay? Now, beloved, this is their account. Now, of course, the only way you can explain uh, something like that, got, be, so, let me tell you one thing, okay? The so-called U.S. government are well aware what sank the Titanic, okay? They're well aware of it. That's why they never go over there and remove it. They can. They can actually remove that thing. But they are not allowed. There is a reason why they are not allowed to remove that thing. And they know very well what sank this thing. As you will soon find out. Okay. Now you got those people. Those wealthy folks. Uh, that were in the Titanic. Uh, Margaret Marlow Brown. Uh, Charles Melville Hayes. Um, Charles Melville Hayes. This is his castle. Is that what that is? Um, let me see. Charles went to England in early 1912 to discuss financing option with his British business associated. So you got those rich billionaires, millionaires go over there dis discussing business and they didn't make it back. A lot of them went to get money. They get the money. In fact, they didn't make it back. Okay, so those are that's J. Bruce East May. All right. Those are a few people. That's their grave. Uh, George Denick Wick. Um, uh, George Denick Wake and uh, Isidore and Ida Strauss. I believe they were German. Okay. All right. Uh, Isidore and Ida Strauss are the first people who were profiled who become millionaires during their lifetime, according to the New York Times. Okay. Those were millionaires that won this. Okay. Billionaires, millionaires. All right. They were all in this thing. And all of those people that we are watching here, they all perish. Thus mean they had things they had bought with them that were in the ship and they didn't have time to somewhat retrieve them or taking those things out and those things are being looted by the so-called rich people that went to auction and buying maps and buying ed, uh, information, buying things and then they go out there privately and then they, oh, we're going to uh, one of those... um. Uh, tourist stuff, well, it's not. They go out there, they loot the freaking place, they took everything with the robot, and then they left. Now, um, they say the, the Titanic was blow up for insurance money because they wanted to, the, they were broke and stuff like that. Okay, all of those things, that's what they're coming. Now, we got Ford, we got a loud boom, we got people that say they, they uh, a bomb explode down there. There were no fire. <laughs> there were no fire, Bridget. Okay, boom, this thing cracked. And then it, it's just sick. That's what they say. Now, those are the picture of the people. 
All right. Boy. Those are the images of the people, the victim of the Titanic, of course, just to show the nation that, you know, only one person that was on board, that was a, a, a brother Joseph and his family. Okay, most of those people, okay, millionaires, billionaires, they don't look like us, and then they are not here. Okay? You know what that means? Every single one of those people that you are seeing here that perish on the Titanic, all their souls are still down there. They are not resting in peace, okay? For those of you that study with us, you know what's going on with those people's soul. So they are, in fact, in some way, somehow, guarding the ship, okay? They are, they are in great torment. All those peoples, men, women, children, those two dudes look alike. Their souls are down there. So when you, a so-called millionaire, you go down there, you go disturb those people. You didn't do a libera, okay, to liberate them, which we need to do a libera for our brother Joseph. That is if he did indeed perish there, okay? A young black man, all right, on, on board with a white woman in there, they could have lynched the brother in there. They could have killed a brother in the Titanic and lynched the brother there. We, you never know. He was the first uh, person that was in there. They could have literally lynched and killed him. Okay, and things like that. We don't know. But it, 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 um, he was the only guy and we need to do a libera to liberate the, the soul of the brother. Now, you see all those people right there we just see? All their souls are down there in that thing guarding, guarding these quote-unquote treasures or boats and things like that. Okay, so when you go down there, you go disturb this. You also, eh, not disturbing them, but tormenting them. You actually put more of the torment and angering them because those people they are all about their wealth because that's what Gentiles are. They they go about their wealth. Is that thing recording? Yes, it is. All right now. Okay, just just to show you all those people that were in there. Now, beloved, this is what we just said here. That was an account of the Gentiles. They heard a loud boom. Some said it was a torpedo, some said it was a submarine, some said the, the, the captain did this on purpose, they did it for insurance, for what do we know here? Well, we have a legend here, for those of you that study with us, okay, we have a legend, it's something that, you know, we come up with, it has nothing to do with reality, but the legend goes as such. Joseph Le Mercier Lawash, he went to... Uh, France Paris to study. So he was studying over there. He was doing pretty well, pretty good. And then one night he had a dream. And in his dream he saw a beautiful young woman while he was going to bed. And he saw a woman, a young beautiful woman sitting in his womb. That woman was so tall that her head hit the ceiling she sit on one of the table in the womb glowing blue and he sat down upon the bed and he looked at her and she greeted him and then he greeted her and she was speaking unto him without her mouth moving and she asked him to marry her and he told him if you marry me I will give you all the riches in the world. If you marry me, I will give you everything that you want, but with one condition. You cannot have another woman. You cannot have another wife. You cannot have another girlfriend. If you marry me, I'll give you everything that you need. He said, I'll give you three sunsets to decide. And then she disappeared. Lawash woke up, he sit down, he thought, he think, and then he went back to sleep. In the morning, he pondered upon the things, he walked around, and he thought about it. And then after three sunset, the same woman appeared in his womb, with the womb glowing blue, and she sit there, a giant, beautiful woman, with her head almost touching the ceiling. She's wearing all precious gold and precious gemstone and precious 
um, some silver and a crown above her head. She's dressing beautifully as a queen, and her leg is coarse, and she's sitting on the chair talking to him. But he had a feeling that he was somewhat underwater, but he could not see nor breathe the water. But he felt like the gravitation in there was a little bit lighter. He could see her hair floating in the air as if it's someone that is either underwater or is running at slow motion. And he told her, and she said, have you considering my offer? He said, yes, I have. He said, well, what say you? He said, the answer is no. And she said, no. He said, no, I can't marry you. And she asked him why. He said, I can tell you why, but I can't marry you. That is my final answer. And she warned him. She said, stay away from anybody of water. Stay away from the, stay away from anywhere that, it, that there is water. And then in a fraction of a second, there was a loud boom, and she left. The blue light extinguished. The womb become heavy again. The womb was light, become heavy. She disappeared, and Lawash woke up. And Lawash got up and, and go through his days, and in a few more weeks, then he talked to his wife, and after that, few more years, and. He got a daughter. He got another daughter. He forgot about the whole thing. But in the meantime, there was the same woman that came in in his womb, transformed herself into a beautiful other woman, and he was spying on him. He saw that he fell in love with a woman named Juliet, and they have two daughters. And they had planned to go from England, from France to England, and to England, from England to America, and from America to Haiti. And they were boarded the Titanic. And she went to the ocean. She took her normal form. She was a so-called an undine, which you know about mermaid, but we call them undine according to our studies. And when she was in the water... She looked at the boat, which was anchored in England, South Ham Southampton, and she swam so fast at a lightning speed. She swam so fast, and she passed the boat, and from England to North Atlantic, she crossed there in a matter of fraction of a second. Okay, to, we're not going to exaggerate. It takes her at least 10 seconds to swim through the water and get there. And while she got there, she stayed in the middle of the ocean early, or whatever that day was, and she, her upper body is up, and she's looking in the distance patiently, waiting in the midst of those icebergs where the boat, she know the path of the boat. And sure enough, when the boat got there, she saw the boat is coming at night, and she just standing half her way in the in the half her way off her hopper body is up. A lower fish tail is in the water, which made out of diamond. Her scale is made out of glowing, sparkling diamond, and she's watching the ship with a fierce look coming, and she's breathing, breathing. Her breathing are becoming more intense as the ship is approaching. And while the ship approaching to a distance about two miles, she breathed or she took a great inhale. And with this great inhale, with all her might, she unleashed a massive sonic boom, a massive sonic wave out of her mouth, a giant shriek with all her strength. And then this wave, the sounds of a wave, travel with the sound, with the speed of sounds, and hit the ship and break it in half. That's when the people heard the boom, and this thing broke in half. And she swam with the lightning speed, 
and hit the ship with her hand. She starts tearing up the ship, drowning people, pulling them down there. And she's going so fast as if the ship was being shot by bullets. But they could, they, all this is a, a glistening light going through the ship, piercing it. And then she go uh, down there. She grab the ship anchor and she pull the ship, the half of the ship down her with all her strength. And then the, the bottom sunk and then the others, people are drowning. And she swam to Juliette, Laos wife. And she took Juliette and the kids and she put them in the boat. And then she literally put them or swim them ashore so fast. And she didn't hurt her. She didn't hurt the kids. And she swam back to the wrecking, drowning, killing people. And she find Lawash. There was a battle. Lawash had some power too. Okay, we're not going to go into this, but this is our legend. Okay, the battle was fierce. She was water. Lawash was fire. Okay, there was a threat that was made. And then Lawash like comply. And then she took Lawash and he put Joseph inside of an air bubble and he swam and she swam or swim in the depth of the ocean with him. He was never seen before. He was never seen again. She swam in the depth ocean and the darkness with him. She's gone with him, but she put him inside of a bubble, an air bubble, and then that's it. She disappeared. That is our legend. That's how we tell the story. That doesn't mean it's true. The main point here that this thing was destroyed by a so-called an undine, another being. Now, why do we come with this quote-unquote legend, Bridget? You want to know why? Because the so-called the Gentiles cannot travel the same way that they did by sea, by air, by land, and by railways the way that they used to. Because the ley line is switching. There's a lot of things that are happening that the so-called government refused to tell us and they will never tell us. And we are well aware of those beings that are doing this, the energy switch and all that. So, what happened? And now a lot of people will say, well, you know, Big uh mermaids doesn't exist. Uh, the so-called undine, they don't exist because um, if they were, scientists would have revealed and stuff. Let me tell you what so-called scientists or those guys did. What you are looking at here, it's called Christopher Columbus Journal. Now, beloved, let's not be too hasty. We know for a fact the so-called Gentiles, if there's one person that they love and they like to give a lot of credit, is Christopher Columbus because he discovered America and then this and that. He named the Indian Indian. He named this that. He named the land. And blah, 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 blah. This man was so smart. Okay, he completed. He made a feat that the so-called other Gentiles could not do, but yet he did it. He he, tra he traversed the transatlantic. He did all this and so. I mean, this man was pretty smart. This man was uh, so smart, he was a genius. He was that the Elon Musk of his time because that's the guy they raise right now, being the world's smartest, richest man. Because you know Tesla and you know the, the SpaceX and all that, Starlink and stuff like that, Twitter buying, firing people. So yeah, this man is so smart. I mean, indeed, the fellow smart. Up until when he wrote this in his journal, and this is what he wrote. He said, this is page 154 in Christopher Columbus journal. Okay, this is actually, this is what he wrote in there. Okay, now, on the previous day, when the Admiral went to the Rio del Oro, he saw three mermaids. Uh, they put a footnote, one over there. He saw three mermaids, which was well out of the sea. But they are not so beautiful as they are painted. Uh, they are, as they are painted, though to some extent they have the form of a human face. The admiral says that he has seen some of other times in Guinea, and the coast of Manica, which is in Africa. Now they put a footnote it, that that is Christopher Columbus, Virgin. That's like Elon Musk tell you he, when he was in his spaceship, he saw three aliens. 
He said, I saw three aliens, but they, they do not look like those little green aliens. <coughs> Excuse me. And they are showing you on the TV. They look like three strong black men, but you could clearly see that they are not actually human. They are black though, but they are not like us. They are like hell of a lot bigger, and they were breathing in space. I saw them, and I wrote it down. I'm Elon Musk. I wrote it just, just like Christopher Columbus. Okay, that's the report that he brings. Oh, guess what they said? The people that have the report, they put a footnote here. They said, the mermaids of Columbus are the manatees or sea cows of the Caribbean Sea and great South American rivers. They are now scarcely ever seen out of sea. Their resemblance to human beings when rising in the water must have been very striking. They have small rounded heads and cervical vertebrae which form a neck enabling the animal to turn his head about. The four limbs also instead of being pectoral fins have the character of the arm and the hand of a higher mammalia. These peculiarities and their very human way of suckling their young, holding it by the forearm, which is movable of the elbow joint, suggests the idea of mermaids. The cogni the, the cogni the congener, the congener of the mammali, mamati, um, <clears throat> which has been seen by Columbus on the coast of Guinea, which is somewhere in Africa, is the dugong. So, what they said here, they say, Christopher Columbus was so stupid. He was so dumb. He saw three sea cow. Now, how do they look like, Bridget? Let me see if I have the, the, the images. This, this is what he saw. This is the animal that Christopher Columbus, a super smart man, a freaking admiral that have the knowledge of the stars, the astrology, the Holy Spirit was upon the man. He traveled all the stretches thing and then he mistake it not once, but thrice. Manity is for people? Is that what that is? Okay, Christopher Columbus, he let me let me get some um he, he he not only he mistakenly this for the the, the so-called when he was in the, in the coast of Haiti he saw them okay and then they say oh those are humanities he said they came out of the water bridging okay the so-called mermaid he saw three of them like the one that you are seeing right here let me enlarge this a little he saw three of them and then he said the one that they he saw, they are not as beautiful as they used to paint them. Those things were terrifying. And their bodies, okay, came up so high. Can you imagine you go to the sea and you see three of those things? And how could you mistake something like that for a freaking manity? <coughs> Excuse me. You saw three things like this. You could see... That it, of course, beloved, this is an example. This is what's made by our students. Okay, that's not actually real mermaids. This is just a depiction that we made to comparing what they are saying in this book. Now they are saying this guy, Christopher Columbus version, he mistakenly something like that that have hair and body. Okay, this is not. You would never mistake something like that for uh, manatees, and they they came out of the water. They were so high. Okay? I saw three of them. The reason why it's three because it's symbolic. They always have three of them. Okay, most of the time it's three of them that they are seeing because there is a reason why. Just like for the people that study with us, you know for a fact when the demon come unto you, there is a reason why they carry a pitchfork. And the pitchfork has three a uh, little hair or three little head. The pitchfork's always depicted on three. There is a reason why you can you see three over there. All right? Now, and the thing is like, they came out of the water, their body, their upper body came out so high. He said, I saw them, but they weren't that beautiful though, okay? They weren't that beautiful. They were not as beautiful as this one, 
okay, that sit there with their skins made out of gold, and then they, you know, they sit on the rock and they, they because the undines are all about that stuff, okay, and then they are not as beautiful as this one and waiting for men to have sex with because that's what they do. It's something that they do all the time. We read the book, we know why they are doing this thing and the purpose of it. So they want to tell you not not only Christopher Columbus mistake this, okay, a woman for this thing right here, which has no hair, okay, all right, and, and then they say, oh, well, the pirates back then, all right, this is what those guys used to have sexual intercourse with, the manatees, which you don't find in deep sea, Bridget. Those manatees usually stay somewhere in, 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 in canals in shallow water. They don't go into deep water. Now, how, how heavy is a manatee, Bridget? Okay, okay. A manatee is a regular, the American manatee is weighing 990 pounds. And the African manatee weigh 1,000. The one that Christopher, they, they assume Christopher Columbus saw because they try to hide what's, in, what's going on. They try to hide what keeps sinking those certain boats. Now, can you imagine you as a pirate drunk and then you take an animal that weighs 900 pounds i don't know how you're going to pull a 900 pound animal you put it on the boat and then ha have your way with it how, how on earth something like that those manatees that you are looking at they look like people how is that look like people the sea cow okay the manatee and the sea cow Okay, and people believe that. You see, the manatees that you're looking here, they are so heavy. They weigh about 990 pounds or, you know, the dugong weigh about 2,000 pounds. So now you cannot have a 2,000 pound manatee stick its upper body out of the water like a dolphin. You see how the dolphin, um, let's see, let, let me see the picture. Dolphin... Uh, tail play is that what they call it? Tail play when when they are doing that. Whoops, when they are doing that tail playing thing, and then you know. Okay, you see what? The, well, when the dolphin are, are, are swimming, swimming up. Yeah, the, okay, this one they can do that. Manatees cannot come with all the upper body out there. The manatee cannot do this. They are way too heavy. They cannot come, okay, and do this. You see how the dolphins are doing this? They do that. They, they swim backward. They swim backward. They are mammals. Manatee cannot do this. Indeed, what Christopher Columbus did saw was the Undines. <clears throat> because he says it here in his journal. Okay, let's get rid of the, the manatee. Let's go to the journal. All right. Uh, apology beloved you know we just go through this thing and the way that it is okay so now this is page one one uh, um one uh, uh 150 154 all right let's let's read it again all right on the previous day when the admiral went to the rio del Oro, he saw three mermaids which was well out of the sea that mean all that they were so out of the sea he could see their tail he know they were a so-called mermaid okay but they are not so beautiful as are painted though to some extent they have from the form of a human face the admiral says that he had seen some at the other time in guinea in the coast of manica uh, the admiral said that this night is the name of our Lord. He will set on his homeward voyage without any further delay, whatever, and the and stuff. Because one thing, those things were guiding uh, Christopher, okay? They were like showing him the way and they were giving him sign, okay? Things like that, okay? Now, of course, well, the one that he saw, that's what he what, Bridget? They're trying to downplay this thing and saying, oh, that's not what that was. You know that's not what that is, all right. So um, um, the 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 so-called uh, uh, mermaid, okay, those things that he saw, those three mermaid that terrifyingly, uh, uh, striking, terrifyingly things that he saw, they are not. They were like manatees and stuff like that. No, they were not. That's not what that is. They were not manatees. 
You see, according to our studies, those things are in the sea. They have a specific duties. They are good of them. They have polarity. They are good. They are bad. Some of them are there as guardian. You know, have you ever wondered why the so-called Gentiles could not come to our land? Because we have guardian in the sea that guard the sea. Now, beloved, if if we have guardian angels that guarded us. Indeed, when we do our research, we find out in the Amazon jungle, they have certain things that guarding the jungle. Certain creatures, remember the video that we had where the gentleman say, well, those things that, that guarding the Amazon, those super beings, those super soldiers, they look like the predator, like that one that you're seeing here. They are so fast. They are so rapid. They move so fast. And they are the protector of the technology that they have over there and, quote-unquote, in the jungle or the Amazon jungle. Now, if we have terrestrial guardian, okay? If we have terrestrial guardian like this fellow right there, okay? Like those predator-looking dudes that guarded them. Thus, we know for a fact, in the heaven, we have the so-called, the, the, the alien, they want to call them, Dr. Norman Bergman told you that we see as, as there is a picture there that your black people get enough. So we got guardian up, up, up above. You got guardian on the land. It would make sense, beloved. You have guardian in the sea. Remember, those guys are very fast and the technology is far more advanced than anything that the so-called Gentiles can come up. They have exoskeleton suit and all that stuff. Now, what do we have down there that are somewhat guarding treasures or the sea? Because there's a lot of treasures down there. Okay, this is Christopher Columbus saying this. He saw this. Again, we make the analogy just like Elon Musk. <clears throat> okay, the guy that he said he landed on Mars. Okay, well, he can go to Mars. When he went to Mars... And then he come back, he say, hey, I went to Mars, all the inhabitants over there, a bunch of black people. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, boy. <laughs> uh, why do many say, like, uh, the people that he saw over there, they are a bunch of workers working in a coal mine. When they come out there, their skins are black. <laughs> what he said, he said that the, the people that he saw over there, the workers are black. They, I mean, they, they look like they're slaves, but we don't know yet. That's what he said. He, he told them, no, that's no. I'm, I'm telling you, every single person on Mars is actually black folk. And they're super dark. And they don't get too well with us. And they kick us back. They say, don't come down there anymore. Uh, no, that's not what it meant. He, 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 um, the thing is that, you know, in space... Uh, uh, bring this expert over here, just like that dude, that expert on the Titanic. You, you already got an expert right here. You got this fellow right there, this expert. Hey, but bring this expert and explain over there. Let's let's hear that expert. So, yeah, uh, I suppose it's only fair to say that the people on board, they know it's an exceptionally perilous and dangerous thing they're undertaking. I would say it's probably more perilous than going to space, to be honest with you. Really? Um, you know, if things go... So, I say it's more perilous and going to, to space, which is true. Do you know, one of them <clears throat> one of them said, if the people, remember the quote that uh, Ronald Reagan said, something to that effect. He said um, uh, to the female reporter, said, if the people, the American people, find out what we did unto them, unto them they will solve something to that effect. They will round it up here and kill us, and then they laugh. Some something like that. If you know the quote, put it in the um, comment board or put it in the chart board. It will help us a lot because we are information sharers. There is another quote again. They said, if the so-called people on earth, the land dwellers, know what's down there, they will never get into the sea. They will never touch. They will remove. They will build a giant wall against all the beaches, all the shores, and black the sea. They will never want to get down there and never touch the water if they knew, majority of them, what's down there. Of course, 
Christopher Columbus tell you he saw the Andean, of course, and then um, let's take a, a, a couple possibilities, okay, to 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 show the people what seems to be the issue here. We almost done, Bridgen. Okay, how long we are into this thing? Usually, I take way too long to explain things. Almost an hour. Damn. All right. Now, do you remember this? And see a fishing. This happened five days ago. Okay, at least 79, 79 people drowned and over 100 were rescued five days ago. Listen. Boat sinking with hundreds on board, hundreds of migrants missing. It's believed some 700 people were on board, the boat sinking off the coast of Greece. Tonight, the images coming in of rescues, those migrants being pulled from the water, swimming with no life vest to survive. Hundreds still missing at this hour. Here's ABC's Marcus Moore. Tonight, the urgent rescue operation after the deadliest shipwreck off Greece in nearly a decade. A Navy helicopter lifting a survivor to safety. More than 100 rescued from this fishing boat that authorities say was packed with nearly 700 migrants when it overturned and sank in the deep waters of the Mediterranean, about 50 miles off the coast of Pylos, Greece. Tonight, there are at least 79 dead, with hundreds more still missing. The Greek Coast Guard saying that fishing boat was first spotted midday Tuesday, but those on board refused multiple offers for help, instead continuing their journey from Libya to Italy. Officials say just after 2 o'clock in the morning, the vessel made a series of sharp turns and capsized, sinking in less than 15 minutes. That's a bunch of garbage. A boat making a sharp turns and capsized and sink in less than 15 minutes. Do you really believe that? Do you? Passengers falling into the sea. Authorities launching a massive search. A 300-foot private yacht picking up survivors, bringing them back to the shore. Authorities say the migrants rescued were in the water without life jackets. They are believed to have fled from Egypt, Pakistan, and Syria in search of a better life. David, there's no word on what caused this boat to sink. Officials say there were no high winds at the time. Again, they always, okay, we don't know what happened. There were no high winds. The water was calm. The people were just in the, on the boat. And suddenly, boom, something hit that boat. It capsized. Do you know what would, you know what kind of strength it would take for something like that to capsize? Something like that to push or the wind and, and, and for this thing to just capsize? Do you know what kind of things that can do this? You, you'll know soon enough. And that these desperate and dangerous journeys across the Mediterranean have been on the rise. David. Mark. Okay. So that's like 79 people that did not make it and this thing capsized. Till now, they don't want to tell the people, wait, what? What happened? Who did this? But something must have caused it. There weren't no high winds. The boat wasn't rocking. Oh, the boat make a sharp turn. What? How? Since when boat can make sharp turns? Get out of here, man. Let's take the other one. Okay? Tonight, gripping video of the moment two women trapped inside a capsized houseboat were rescued Friday morning in Florida. Oh, my God. That boat. Look at that thing. It's going capsize, too. Video acquired by our NBC affiliate WJHG shows the moment boy Jordan jumped off a fishing boat without hesitation to help rescue the women trapped inside the houseboat, which served as a shop out in the sandbar. I jumped off the boat I was on into the water uh, and then grabbed a two by four, uh, ripped the two by four off the structure and um, smashed in the window. Uh, the first window pane, it's a sliding glass door that they were trapped behind. Boyd says just minutes before, the women and another friend were towing the floating shop when an unusual storm took them by surprise. I mean, we were very blindsided uh, from the time that we knew that there was going to be a storm coming to the time that people were walking out of the water was probably less than 20 minutes. Travis Brady was in a fishing boat with two of his friends near the marina off the Gulf Coast of Panama City and saw Jordan jump into action. He, without hesitation, was just in the water helping those people. Moments later, Brady and his friends taking action themselves, trying to get close enough to those in the water to provide support. We will. We'll 
debris flying around them, their own boat needing to operate through severe weather. Within 15 minutes, we were in, you know, five foot, six foot waves. Boyd says the waves made it impossible for everyone to climb on board to Brady's boat, forcing his friends to swim to shore while he made it on board to rescue his own fishing boat before it crashed into the seawall. It restores your faith in humanity makes you really reflect on the things that are important in life. I'm going to try not to get emotional, but um, it was just, it was an intense moment. What could have ended in tragedy avoided thanks to selfless quick thinking and a group effort in response to Mother Nature. Yes, Mother, Mother Nature indeed. This thing again happened 13 hours ago, okay? you All, all you are seeing, the, the, the submarines are missing, both are getting capsized, and, and stuff like that. Okay, all right then. Okay, let's take the not the other video. Do all this thing, damaging the boat. People, are, the boat are capsizing, the boat are missing, and stuff. And then they keep telling people, oh well, that's like that's like some rare occurrence and rare thing. Oh, all right, then. okay. Thank you for joining us. We begin with breaking news out of Nigeria, where at least 100 people are feared dead after a boat capsized. It happened on the Niger River between Niger and Kwara states. Witnesses say the vessel was carrying people returning from a wedding ceremony in Niger state. Let's go live to Al Jazeera's Ahmed Idris, who is in Abuja for us. Ahmed, what more are you hearing about the circumstances of this accident? Well, basically, um, we hear that uh, search and rescue is still going on, uh, but it's with more than 24 hours passed now since that accident, we're probably looking at a recovery effort. now. So this happened seven days ago, Bridget, okay? You see 13 hours, seven days, five days, and those things are happening and people are saying, oh, well, this is like, this is a coincidence. This is, this is a coincidence. Okay, all right. The situation, according to witnesses we've spoken with, uh, looks grim and people are thrown into mourning. Uh, most of the victims are coming from two villages in Kwara State. They went into Niger State for a wedding and were coming back when their boat hit something in, in the water and then capsized. And um, we understand that the boat Okay, let's listen to what he said here again, all right? Into Niger State for a wedding and were coming back when their boat hit something in, in the water and then capsized. And when their boat hit something in the water and capsized, what could it possibly be for a freaking John boat to hit and then capsize, brethren? Did they hit the mountain? More than 100 people are feared to be drunk. And the, they, they, the boat capsized, they didn't find, no, none of the kids, they didn't find them. There were no children there. All the children are missing. This thing hit something so hard, or something hit this boat so hard, it capsized it. Again, let's listen to this, Richard. Okay, we are making connection, all right? I just stayed for a wedding and we're coming back when their boat hit something in, in the water and then capsized. And um, we understand that the boat was overloaded. Hundreds were on that boat. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, are yeah. Still yeah. Tr uh -huh. Struggling to uh, get as much information. Yeah, because they tried to cover up the whole thing. Oh, well, well, the boat has a lot of people. People think like this is the first time things like that happen or the first time those migrants of like hundreds, like th th hundreds of them in one boat. That thing happened all the time. It happened all the time. They're trying to figure out like, okay, oh, well, the, the official, they're struggling to give us answer. No, they're trying to cover this up and then not showing you exactly what's going on. As uh, they can. And the accident happened in a remote location far away from the state capital where the police are. The police have confirmed that the accident happened, but they can't say exactly how many people have died. Mm. But what we're hearing from, uh, from various sources in that area is that mm. at least 64 people came from one village yep. and about 40 from another village. And so Got the number 64 and 40, you know what to do. So the incident is uh, still, the story is still developing in that area. Right. Search and rescue, as we said, is going on. But again, it's looking increasingly like a recovery effort. So a developing story, as you say, Ahmed, such accidents sadly are not unusual in Nigeria. What's being done? Okay, so we, we're pretty much done with that, okay? 
Now, this is what happened now in a span of a month, like a week. <laughs> That's like a week, seven days, uh, five days, 13 hours, and then a couple hours ago. That is spent off a week, brethren, okay? And this is what happened two years ago when we were doing Esau's trouble and we were warning them, okay? Okay, now, Indonesia military, missing Indonesian found submarine broken in at least three parts. You got a, a missing submarine that has 53 people in it. It's broken in three parts, brethren. They found him. That thing, look, look at this, okay? The thing is shredded. The thing is shredded. It's shredded and broken in three parts. You mean to tell me they hit? Look, look at the life vest, Bridget. Look! Oh! How could you just sit there and say, that guy that wore this thing got, got, he hit a rock? A rock hit and shredded this thing like this? A rock? Look at, look at this thing right here. It, it looks like some kind of, well, anyway. It looked like some kind of uh, um, um, stuff, but Bridget, okay? Look at this, man. Look at this. Look at this. This is the life vest. One of those guys shredded. When they find a submarine, Bridget, the submarine is shredded in three parts. You mean to tell me that thing hit like three, um, uh, uh, three, uh, uh, Rocks, three mountains, three things. It hit it three times. Bam. Oh, we hit something. Go back, hit it again. Bam. Hmm, I don't know. Third time is a charm. Bam. Oh, ah, we, we, we hit something. This thing, those things, that mean like something. I don't know what it is. I'm just speculating. This is just conspiracy theories. This is just big lead. I say, hey, because I have no idea what that thing is. <laughs> But it seems like something grabbed those fellows and shred them. They find a life jacket, they didn't find one body. Okay then. Alright. That's what happened two years ago. It happened um oh well they don't actually put the well and April twenty fifth. Uh, 2021 that was two years ago we warned them we told them we told them exactly what happened and what's going on and this thing going to keep on happening 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 and it's going to get so frequent you won't be able to ignore it all right that was two years ago and then here's another one two now years ago breaking news we mentioned off the top of the show a boeing jet missing off of indonesia abc's julia mcfarland joins us from london with the very latest julia good morning now, a Boeing jet carry a bunch of people missing on the coast of Indonesia in January 9th, 2021. And then like four, three months later, it happened. The submarine missed with all the 53 people in the same area, the same country, Indonesia. And people like, oh, well, that it happened all the time. So what? This thing, we, we went to the whole thing. We knew what causes this. And then we know exactly what that is. We're not going to go into this because I want to hand it this thing and go a little bit further. All right. Now, oh, this is, this happened eight days ago. Okay. Men jump off a burning yacht, three British tourists missing in Egyptian Red Sea. I don't know what the hell is going on in those seas over there in Egypt and, and uh, um, uh, Libya and stuff like that. Okay. So those, those, um, those. Yacht, or they are not owned by you know certain people that do not have the means for them, okay? They are not owned by that, okay? All right, this thing can catch on fire, and somebody's missing in there, okay? And how come this thing has no life jacket, it has no uh boat thing, no safety boat, or whatever that was. This guy going to jump, right? I think he's the guy that jumped and they didn't find him. Anyway, so that's another one. Now we come to the conclusion, Bridget. Job chapter 41. Let's read six verse or five verse. 
Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook? You know what? Let me let me just let me just read it from my phone while I'm playing this message while I'm playing the video for you. Job 41 we will read mostly the whole thing but not Can thou draw us? Can thou draw out Leviathan with a hook or his tongue with a cord which thou let us down? Canst thou put a hook into his nose or boy's jaw through it is a tongue? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as a, with a bird? Or will thou bind him with thy maidens? Now, beloved, can you imagine those people that are in this submarine while they went down there to that Titanic visiting? I don't know. And then uh, they pop, they hit a knock on their window. And then when they turn around, there's a creature like this. Something like that. Right in the midst. Staring at them. Hmm? Can you imagine? Those people go down there. And there's a freaking creature like this. This thing just pop up right at lightning speed. This thing, boom. It pop up right in front of them. And then he's just looking at them. And then he said certain stuff. For those of you that studied with us. When you meet <clears throat> those entities. When you meet them face to face. They're staring at you, staring at, at them. What do you say? What is the password? What do you say first? What do you do when you meet something like that? This entity is this Leviathan like animal. You met this thing staring at you underwater. And then you inside of a, a little thick stuff. You don't know what they this thing right there. Hmm? Can you imagine those people come up and they see this creature? This creature just like right there in front of the window, the windshield, so to speak. And she just staring at them. Can you imagine? They see something like that down there. Hmm? Can you imagine they saw something like this? Can you imagine when they look into the distance, they see this dude just standing there. And then he asks, the, well, and they, they say something to, to him, of course, <laughs> which they shouldn't. It's you shouldn't. If you study with us, you know what not to say. You know when to talk, when not to talk. Can you imagine you see something like that in the midst of the darkness of the ocean? And this thing, he's riding a certain animal, okay? A, a giant beast. Can you imagine? Huh? What would you do if a creature like this pop up on you? Can you imagine you heard a voice? And then when you turn around and there's this women-like creature right there with you. Hmm? You see this woman right there. You don't know what? Is that a woman? Staring at you. You're going to use your second amendment. I mean, you're a billionaire, right? You're going to uh, give it a program. Uh, you're going to give it a few bucks, a food slip. So it would... No, not doing anything to you. Because the, there are things like that down there. Huh? What if you see this woman down there? What if those people... Then again, Bridget, I personally, I think those people are alive. I, that's what I'm thinking. 
I'm not saying they are dead. I'm just saying they are alive. They are in a place being interrogated. Okay, we all know the story about the Haitian fellow, you know, that uh, uh, um, went into this thing. And, uh, you know, we, we tell the story multiple times. You people know it. And then for those of you that don't know it, <laughs> we'll tell it another time. If you're interested, put a comment and then we will um, we'll make a video about it. That is if you're interested. But it's, it's a little bit long. Because when, when I get into things, I'll, I'll bring all sort of things. That's why I don't edit the videos, okay? What if you see something like this? Huh? A being like that pop up. This is more like a, a pleasant one. Okay, those are those are a little bit pleasant to a little bit easy on the eye, although a little bit scary. But uh, I I would rather I would rather not to meet none of them. Okay, you know what if you meet something like this? What if they saw something like that, Bridget? Huh? What if they saw an entity like this? What if there is an entity like that in the midst of the sea? Remember, Christopher Columbus told you they are not as beautiful as this one. Okay, this is strikingly beautiful and stuff like that. They are not. Certain one of them, of course, if you study with us, you know they are the most beautiful of all the beings. And they don't look like, you know, fish tail and not like that. They just look regular women. That they, It seems like they are underwater, but they are not. Okay, the water is somewhat breathable like the air. Uh, what if the submarine run into something like that? Into a twisted sea serpent. A dragon sea, a leviathan, whatever you want to call it. What if they run into something like that? Something that can, it has the teeth that can shred it you. Hmm? Can you believe they were taken and then they were brought in front of this guy which is their king? What if, beloved? Because there are certain things down there. What if they met a creature like that? This look like the thing that can shred you, man. They are fast. They got sharp teeth. And this thing can shred a submarine. Shred. Think this thing can shred you. There is no freaking way that a submarine, okay, um, they, uh, went down and then they find the people close shredding. That means they were attacked by something. What if in the midst of this, something like that pop up to you? Boom! It just pop up. Like with lightning speed, pop up. And then it asks you, what are you doing here? What's the password? Who are you? What are you doing here? Do you have clearance? What's your password? Hmm? What if they met things like this? Because they are down there. The Leviathans, they are down there for the sea monsters. That's 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 what it meant. Huh? What if they met things like that, creatures like this? Hmm? What if they met this fellow right there? They brought them in front of this guy. And he's not too um he's not too uh, too cardio, so to speak. Hmm? Is there is a possibility of that? Because Christopher Columbus told you he saw three of them. They don't look as a, yeah, they don't look like that. For instance, those three, they look they are underwater, but you cannot mistake in three things like that and say they are manity, brethren. Those cannot be manities, man. You can't look at three things like that. You say they are manities, man. <laughs> this can't be manities, dog. See those things sit. And be in the water like this. And so, oh, well, they're, they're all manities. No, they are not. Now, let's just pause this. Why is it, Bridget? Why is it all now? We have the little mermaids. They put her in black. There is an outrage. Uh, they don't like this black girl being played little mermaid. Why is it those people are catering to us like this? Of course, the original little mermaid uh, stories was she was a black girl. She was a black girl down there, you know, and she want to come down in, in front of this. But anyway, why is it that there, there is an issue here? Why is it that those people keep showing us in, in water, water, the little mermaids and stuff like that? What is it? What they are trying to say? Uh, 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 what is it? What they are trying to do here? Is something going on here? 
I don't know, man. Of course, brethren, we will have people saying, oh, th those are the water spirit. They are evil and stuff. You don't study. You just hear other people, especially Christian, African Christian, that make deal with the negative ones. You don't know why those things are here. You don't, you don't know their purposes. We do. The one that started with us, we do. Maybe not on this channel. Um, on our main channel, we have private stories. We go in depth about the undines, the salamanders, the gnomes, the sylphs. Okay, those things exist. Uh, we we uh, study the, the Levanahites, the, the, the Kokavites. And right now, we're going to study the Kokavites tonight. I don't know when you're watching this. Uh, the Shemeshites, the Nogahites, the Shabbatites, uh, the, the, um, the zone girdling the earth, and then Pluto. Uh, Uranus, Neptune, uh, we study all the beings that live in there. This universe is populated and loaded with life. Every single planet that you ever seen or seen before or heard before or never heard, they have lives in them. There are people that live in there. Excuse me. You won't believe the power that you, children of the light, have. Never let any of those beings call you a mortal. Oh, mortal, you need to do this. Mortal, mortal that. No, you, in fact, you are not. Uh, Matthew 7 verse 6, it is forbidden for us to reveal those knowledge in the clear hair, but you are not like them. In fact, it's the other way around. Okay, beloved? This sub, whatever this thing, I believe they are still alive. They are somewhere being interrogated. And in due time, if there was a trial, they will let them go. And then uh, they, they won't be able to say what happened. But, um, beloved, we know this thing is not uh, the Titanic. Those people are not going there to sightseeing. They're going there to look this freaking place and something happened. And then, um, again, the story that we tell is a legend. It's not actually true. It's a legend to draw you to the Undines. And uh, those people, uh, they were attacked just like everything that under there, they are well aware of those things, beloved. We give the mighty one great praise, great glory. Our seas are guarded. Our skies are guarded. Our jungles are guarded. At one point, the so-called the Gentiles cannot do, they won't be able to travel at all. Then again, beloved, that this thing that happened here, it happened to the so-called billionaires, okay? Shalom.